The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. There were some who told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans, because they suffered thus? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Lo, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Let it alone, sir, this year also, till I dig about it and put on manure. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? That's what we want to know. Why? Why did these things happen? I think that must have been why these people brought before Jesus the story of the Galileans who were slaughtered by Pilate in the midst of offering sacrifice in the temple. Why? We want to know why Jesus responded with the story of the Tower of Siloam in Jerusalem, falling over on the people who just happened to be standing next to it. Death by a ruler's cruelty, death by sheer accident, why? Jesus is not interested in answering the eternal why question. What he is interested in doing is foreclosing one easy and wrong answer that we reach for a lot when bad things happen, which is that this calamity must be God punishing the victim for something they've done wrong. In the same way that Jesus begins John chapter 9, the story of the healing of the man born blind, where the question is asked, who sinned to this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus says, this calamity has nothing to do with sin. Not every bad thing that happens is a result of some bad thing you did. Oh, great. Well, that's a load off my mind. <laughs> but that's not quite the end of what Jesus has to say. Jesus then says twice, these were not worth, sin worth sinners, not worth offenders, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. We are to repent. That is the call for each and all of us. And repentance, metanoia, means turning away from my self-centeredness and to God. It means confronting my selfishness, my dishonesty, my desire to always defend myself. And in recognizing these things in myself, to come to the 
conclusion that I must change my life. Repentance is a, a change that involves my whole life. But that change cannot just be my resolution to do better. Because if I could do better just because I resolve to do better, then I would be truly perfectible. I could do it on my own, and I would have no need for God's grace. But it is God's grace for which I thirst. Like a fruitless tree in a dry and barren wilderness where there is no water. The wilderness. We think of Lent as a liturgical wilderness. We do this 40-day pilgrimage through this liturgical wilderness, leading us to the cross and resurrection of Jesus and to our participation in his cross and resurrection, our baptism. But the wilderness nature of the Lenten discipline is to remind us of the real wilderness we have created in our lives. And not only us, but as we heard, of course, God's ancient people as well on their 40-year pilgrimage through the wilderness. Ungrateful, grumbling, led astray into sin, and therefore struck down. John the Baptist preached in the wilderness, calling for repentance, saying that the axe is laid at the root of fruitless trees. Any tree that does not bear fruit is cut down. God comes looking for fruit. Will he find it? The fruit trees are barren. The axe is laid at the root. The call to repentance has gone out, but has not been responded to. And what's my answer? Why? Why am I here? Why am I taking up space? Why am I using up the ground? Why do I prefer the barren and dry wilderness I have created in my own selfish life? rather than the rich fare of grace that God freely offers. Jesus calls us all to repentance. He calls us to recognize that God's grace is offered freely, without money and without price. That his rich fare is the table is prepared for us in the wilderness. But I prefer my own fruitless wilderness existence turned in on myself. I will not admit that my money's no good at God's oasis. <laughs> or how much of it I spend on that which does not really satisfy. Why? And Jesus doesn't answer that eternal why question either. His answer is what he offers to do for us. He will dig away at the encrusted, besetting sins around our roots that keep us from being able to take in God's fresh, clear, gracious water. And he will fertilize and nourish us 
with the, 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 the humus, his own humanity offered for us on the cross. And with that nourishment of his own body and blood will encourage us this year also to bear fruit. The vine dresser pleads with the owner of the vineyard for one more year of grace. For time, as we say in the classic language of the church, time for amendment of life. God will wait. There is still time. Yesterday was the 16th of the 40 days of Lent. We don't count the Sundays. There is still time to repent. But the notion that the liturgical wilderness of Lent has an end is to remind us that there is an end to God's patience. God will wait. Jesus has begged this for us. But he will not wait forever. Death will come to every one of us. We will, in fact, all likewise perish. Jesus' caution to those he's speaking with in today's gospel is that when death comes unexpectedly, there's no time to repent. The vine dresser is begging us time to repent. And of course, this cannot but help remind us Lutherans of the very first of Martin Luther's 95 Theses, when our Lord Jesus Christ said repent, he meant for the believer's whole life to be one of repentance. That is the Lenten call. That is the call of the Christian life. Not to trust myself, where I'll always end up in that fruitless wilderness again, turned in on myself, but to trust the one who freely offers the refreshing water and freely offers the rich fare of his banquet, the banqueting table where Christ is both host and bread and wine, his body and blood to strengthen us. Not in our own resolution to do better, but in our trust in Him that empowers us to find the way out of this wilderness as He leads us for the rest of this holy season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.